now that we have the roots in the greenhouse, we're going to evaluate them for some root architectural traits. And we're going to do this using our shovelomic scoreboard, which is basically a protractor with some uh, two centi one two centimeter segments that helps us count density. And there are also some dots reflecting uh, diameter that we can use for nodule size. Um, I enter the data in, in a tablet. Um, I'm using either small shears or a razor blade to take anatomical samples, which I then preserve in ethanol in a vial. And then we go over to this side and use a camera mounted on a tripod to take a, take a picture. And then we can use that image to get some other parameters um, from either image J, which we've made some uh, projects for, or a specialized program uh, called DIRT. So let me walk you through some of the traits that we measure. Um, first of all, you need to know the difference between basal roots, tap root, and adventitious roots. Basal roots are the roots that are emerging right here at the transition zone between the hypocotyl and the radical. So these are going to be, or these are the basal roots. And then this one just has a few adventitious roots up, up there. If we wanted to look at this sample, we can see a much larger number of adventitious roots up here. The basal roots are right here, and the radical is continuing down this direction. So I generally start with the observations of the basal roots. So I first either count the number of whorls, which in this case are two. You can see that this is one file, and this is the first whorl, and that's the second whorl. First whorl, second whorl. Uh, first whorl, second whorl. And in this location, there's only one root occupying that file. So that would be two, two whorls and seven basal roots. And then I would count the number of adventitious roots, which are all the roots there. Um, I might measure taproot branching density. To do that one, I would take a representative section of the taproot and count the number of first order laterals in a two centimeter, centimeter segment. So that's why I have this lines marked on the board. Um, then I would look at angles. So I'd be interested in the angles of the basal roots. In this case, I'm looking at where they cross this line, which is a 10 centimeter arc. And this one is fairly shallow, so I would score this one between 10 and 20 degrees um, from horizontal. And then what else? I give a score for branching density, third order branching density. So that's the number of second and third order lateral roots. Um, this one is fairly high, so I use a 1 to 9 scale, and on this 1 to 9 scale, this one would probably score a 6 or a six or a 7 for third order branching density. And disease is also a score. This one is uh, slightly above average, so maybe a 6 on a disease scale, with 9 being the healthiest. So once we have taken those measurements, um, we can collect an anatomical sample which you can do by, um, I usually try to get a sample about two centimeters below the point where the basils emerge, and simply cut, uh, usually a two centimeter segment, because that's the size of our tubes. Throw that in there, and then we can use that later on for analysis, either with the laser or with the, uh, the hand sectioning and a camera mounted in a microscope. So now we're ready to take a photo of our root crown. And what we use to do that is firstly construct a simple photo booth with PVC tubing and a white cloth. And that helps uh, make a uniform lighting environment and eliminate shadows. Secondly, it's good to have a tripod so you can have a consistent uh, distance from the, image, from the subject. And then I'm using a black foam board as the background to have an even neutral background. And then the root is positioned in the center of the board. The tag identifying the plot number is positioned on one side. 
and a scale marker is positioned on the other side. Um, and it's very important to have a scale marker so that you can easily convert pixels to millimeters. And so you can use anything, a, a quarter is fine, just so you can convert pixels to millimeters. And then once you have everything arranged, simply just focus and take a picture. <laughs>